Welcome everybody to my latest video. This is Joseph Ramirez here. Um, today's video is going to be a profile on the government of Honduras, the current form of it. How does the government of Honduras operate? What, what kind of government is it? Well, we're going to cover all that in today's episode. So what I want to say, first of all, is thank you to all the recent subscribers, um, especially those who are from Honduras, who I've noticed have been um, viewing my videos and commenting on my videos. Gracias, Hondurenos. So as we discuss the government of Honduras, there's all kinds of terms that can be used to describe it. Um, it can be called an oligarchy, an authoritarian dictatorship, a narco-government. There's all these different ways, and we're going to describe why the government of Honduras is called all those names in this video. So, as we discuss the way the government of Honduras works, we need to discuss a little bit of history. Honduras, like a lot of Central America, um, has long been a, a feudal society with lots of poverty. Uh, the World Bank um, says that Honduras, that 66% of the population lives in poverty. And so pretty much everybody lives in poverty, and that's the way it's sadly always been in Honduras. And the poor really have no say in anything in, in government and politics. And then you have a small, rich elite who pretty much control the different industries in Honduras, like the logging industry or the palm oil industry or banking and so forth. And you have rich people like um, Jaime Rosenthal and Miguel Barjum. And these rich guys, they... Oh, of course, um, serve in politics or they'll have their family members like a nephew or a son or whatever go into politics. And that's how the rich uh, are definitely able to uh, control the government in Honduras. Uh, the, the rich are the only ones who have any political clout um, in the country. Uh, for example, Jaime Rosenthal, a rich banker in Honduras, was at one time the vice president of Honduras from 1986 to 1989. And Miguel Barjum, one of his nephews, was the president of Honduras at one point. As we discuss the government of Honduras, we need to also discuss the history. Honduras from the 19th century up until the early 1980s was ruled by a series of dictatorships, right-wing military dictatorships like General Oswaldo Lopez and General Policarpo Paz Garcia. These military dictatorships ruled the country on behalf of the rich business elite. Also, these military dictatorships always wanted to be close allies of the United States. These military dictatorships were very close to U.S. businesses and corporations, such as the United Fruit Company, which is now Dole and Chiquita Fruit, reliant on um, foreign aid from the government of the United States. These uh, military dictatorships were always cruel and repressive and repress the poor and anybody who dared criticize their um, horrible rule. And that is uh, background on what governments in Honduras were like even into the 20th century. So the current government system in Honduras right now um, goes back to the year 2009, when in June 2009, the military of Honduras overthrew the president at the time, Manuel Zelaya, who was more of a left-wing president, and the rich business elite and the military leadership of the country did not like him, so they overthrew him in a military coup in June 2009. And ever since then, the right-wing National Party of Honduras has ruled the country. After a fraudulent, fraudulent election, 
in November 2009, the right-wing National Party of Honduras has basically ruled a one-party system. The National Party of Honduras is one of the oldest political parties in that country, and it is a right-wing uh, conservative political party that's very close to uh, the U.S. government and U.S. corporations. They are the political party of the rich business elite of Honduras. Um, the rich business elite of Honduras pretty much all support the National Party of Honduras. Um, and the National Party of Honduras, uh, since 2010, basically controlled every aspect of the government of Honduras. The Supreme Court, the Congress, the presidency. And they've all been caught in scandals, cocaine trafficking scandals, money laundering, money embezzlement, human rights abuses, and they don't care. The two past uh, leaders of Honduras um, since the coup have been Porfirio Lobo Sosa and current president Juan Orlando Hernandez, and their rule has been characterized by um, extremely high murder rates in Honduras, lots of political assassinations and human rights abuses, so much cocaine trafficking scandals, and um, the National Party of Honduras has made Honduras worse. They've been, um, for example, cutting money to the hospitals in Honduras, instead wanting to spend more of that money on the military. And all the military has been doing is repressing any form of dissent. So in, in Honduras... Um, the way the current government works is they don't tolerate any um, dissent or opposition to their uh, policies. And what they do is they repress and kill um, anyone who gets in their way, from environmental activists to land rights activists to journalists, human rights lawyers, and even NGOs, non-governmental organizations from other countries who try to do charity work in Honduras. They're bullied as well by the government of Honduras. The government of Honduras, people like Juan Orlando Hernandez, they cannot tolerate um, anyone who opposes them. And um, people who protest against the government, no matter who it is, even teachers and doctors, sadly get killed with live ammunition by the military police of Honduras. Um, the government of Honduras can also be described as a narco-government because there have been many incidents of high-profile uh, government officials. And some I've mentioned in my previous videos, like Juan Antonio Hernandez and Juan Carlos Bonilla and Fabio Lobo and others, high-profile um, government leadership in Honduras who have been caught in cocaine trafficking scandals and arms dealing and other things and have been investigated by the United States, the DEA, and some are in jail in the United States right now. It also can be called an oligarchy because it's a small, rich handful of people in Honduras society who control all of the government. The average Honduras person, they don't get any say in their government. Um, they live in poverty, and they're very limited in any, you know, upward mobility to uh, rise up in society. Um, most people in Honduras, sadly, just, they stay in poverty, and anyone who steps out of line with the government gets assassinated or killed. To sum up... Uh, what is the profile of the government of Honduras in its current form? It is a really rotten dictatorship. It's extremely corrupt in every way imaginable. It's repressive. It's authoritarian. It's a narco-government. It's an oligarchy. It's a puppet government of the United States. The United States imposes this government on the people of Honduras and keeps it from collapsing by providing lots of military aid and U.S. military advisors at the Soto Cono Air Base in Honduras. The government of Honduras, ruled by the National Party, is 
only there to serve U.S. government interests as well as U.S. corporations such as Dole and Chiquita. And they're also in power to serve the small, rich business elite in Honduras. They care nothing for the average Honduras person. They don't care about people living in poverty and starvation. They don't care about how people are dying from the coronavirus in Honduras. The hospitals are barely functioning. They have n not really any funding. And people are dying, and the government of Honduras uh, continues using brutal tactics anyways against its people. It, it cares nothing for the average person, and this is why so many people flee Honduras in these large caravans. Just they can't live with this. There's there's no way to have a normal life in Honduras, a good life. <laughs> 